All right guys, so I got another special one for you today. If you guys have been following along, you know that the goal right now is sharing aviation, taking all my friends and family flying so they can experience it, so they can see why I love it so much. Uh, and this one's super special. So this one is a flight with my mom. It was amazing. The first time she's ever flown on a small plane, I think. I don't think she's ever even been in one. Um, certainly the first time she's flown with me. We just did some hopping around at some local airports and we ended up flying over Charleston at night, which I don't have that part of the video, but um, it was just an amazing flight. Awesome time with my mom. Hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as I did. Peace. Can you hear me? Right next to your mouth and talk loud. Okay, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? I... Yep. Is that a yes? Yes. All right, good. I can hear you. That's how loud you have to talk. You got to be okay. purposeful with your talking, okay? Okay. Purposeful. All right. See the flaps coming up. I see the flaps coming okay, up. Okay, radio's electrical equipment. And this is supposed to be going. Yeah. Okay. All right, I got to get the weather real quick. Visibility more than one zero. Sky condition scattered at 4,700. Temperature 25 Celsius. Dew point 14 Celsius. Altimeter 2 niner niner 5. Inches of mercury. Remarks. Density altitude 1400. All right, knee board is on. We got our weather. One, two, three, nothing. Altimeter. Transponder, squawking 1200. Entry on your four flight a second here. Okay. Okay, four flights connected, taxi light coming on. Brakes will test when we roll. Attitude indicator is set. Turn coordinators on and do what it's supposed to do. Heading indicator six just to the three. Okay. All right, so I went over seatbelts with you. Air vents. It is the passenger briefing, so you gotta know everything I'm about to tell you. This is your air vent here. Don't twist it on that uh, gauge right there. You pull this out, and then you can kind of aim it where you want to aim it, but just be careful because this thing's loose. I gotta tighten it. Okay, that's your air vent. You pull that out, it blows air at you. Okay, another. Okay. That's your cabin heat. Pull that, you get heat. You pull this, you get air. Coming okay. out the bottom, okay? And I'll regulate that, but just so you know where it's at. Okay. I got another air vent on this side. And like I said, you can open this in the air. When you do, just keep your hand here. Pull like that, and then it'll, the air will hold it perfectly like that, nice and tight. Okay. Okay. Um, if we need it for any reason, I can't get to it. Fire extinguisher right behind your head. Do you see it? On the wall? Okay, that's where that's at. To get to it, you pull this. And, and make sure you're holding on to it, and then it comes right off the wall. Okay. Okay, that's for cockpit fires, anything like that. Um, the door to open it, you're going to pull this lever. Okay, and that's it. Uh, and then it'll just pop right open. Okay, for any reason you need to get out of the cockpit, if we go down off airport, some reason like that, we have to make an emergency landing somewhere over, not on a runway or anything like that. What you need to do is... Pop the door before we hit the ground. So this is, you want this popped open, because if we hit, it could jam. Okay. You might not be able to get out. So open this before we land, and then meet 700 feet behind the tail. Whichever way the tail's pointing, walk straight back, and that's the meeting spot. Okay? Where, no matter where the tail is. Yeah, wherever we land, look for the tail, walk, follow it straight back 700 feet behind. That's where we're going. Okay. okay. Any questions? No. Okay. Alrighty, so... We are ready to take our, or to taxi then, so I'm gonna make a quick call here. Oh, that's the other thing. If I need to talk on the radio, or somebody needs to talk to me on the radio, I'll put my finger up if I need you to stop talking, or if they're talking to me for some reason, and that'll be how you know that I need to talk. Uh, we're not gonna get flight following right now, so we should be nice and clear. All right, here we go. Okay. Woo, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna test the uh, brakes real quick. All right, we're not gonna go onto the runway yet. We're gonna taxi out to here. Do a run up. Tails waving. That'd be cool. All right, we're gonna do a run up real quick. This is where we test everything. Is. Test everything before we take off. So, 1700 RPM. Two left. Two right. One left. One right. RP. Green. 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 Test idle. No runs. Good. It's a run up. Okay, cabin doors in the locked. Locked. Uh, flight instruments are good. Fuel shut off valve. One last check. That's on mixture full rich. Da -da 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 -da. Throttle mags carb 
Lockheed, engine instruments, ammeter, suction gauge, carbon idle was good. Radios, one, two, three, nothing is set. Flashing beacon is on. Yes, sir. Navigation lights are on, confirmed. Landing light is on, confirmed. Off, but engine is barrier. this the kind of stuff they do in regular? Yes. Over and over yeah. and over yes. again? Multiple, multiple times. You can't fix it when you're in the air, so you do it all on the ground. Okay, we're ready for takeoff. All right, let's do this. Yeah, I'll make a call here. Somerville traffic, Cessna 17048, down the ramp, taxiing out to runway 24. We're going to depart from Bravo. Somerville traffic. Our RPM looks good. Engine instruments are in the green. Airspeed's alive. We're looking for 65. There's 60. Five, rotate. And there's that. Got the brakes. Looking for 75 mile an hour climb out. Everything looks good. You're flying. Oh my god. These little bumps here you're going to feel are just the bumps coming off the trees. Perfectly normal. Holy crap. Alright. Oh. Everything is looking really, really good right now. All the engine instruments are looking really nice. So take comfort in that. Absolutely. Oh my god. Yep. Neighborhood. <laughs> Somerville traffic, Cessna 1704, turning left, crosswind, runway 24, Somerville traffic. So this is called our crosswind lag, we're staying in the pattern until uh, we get to the end of the downwind lag. Still going up, up, up. Oh yeah, 1,000 foot's pattern altitude, we're com coming up to 800 right here. Oh, so that's right to be. Yeah, this is our altitude, so we want that to be straight up. Oh. Somerville traffic, Cessna 17048, turning left downwind, runway 24, Somerville traffic. How come they're not talking back to you? There's no one down there. Oh. You just make your, you let everyone know what you're doing, so that they know what you're doing. There's okay. nobody flying right now, but you, you never know, someone could come in and not make a call. Okay. Happens all the time, it, it, someone cut us off when I was flying with Dale. Uh, took the runway when I was on final, ready to land, someone went right in front of me on the runway. No, no radio calls, nothing. That's the runway there, is yep, it? Yep, so this is downwind. So we took off into the wind, right? Yeah. Then you make a left, left turn because it's left traffic. You only make left turns on that um, when you're taking off that way. And um, the first turn was the crosswind leg, and this is the downwind leg. This is standard standard pattern. This is what, um, what a pattern looks like at an airport. Okay. Every airport is the same type of thing. They all have patterns, yeah. Some of them are left turns, some are right turns. There's Sometimes they're special and things like that, but... Wow, this is amazing. Okay, so now we're going to depart. And we're going to go to St. George to see if Andy's there yet. Alrighty, let's do it. So we're going to traffic system 17048 departing off the downwind for 2-4. Uh, we'll be headed to the northeast. Last call, Somerville traffic. It's beautiful. Yeah. It is nice. It's not near as bumpy as I thought it was going to be. And if we get up over these clouds, it'll be really smooth. Up over the clouds? Huh? Up over them? Yeah, if we do, if, we, if you want to go up there, we can. It'll just take a little while to get up there. Those aren't that high. They're only at 4,700 feet. Uh, <laughs> We're at 1,300 feet now. Yeah. I'm flying. You're flying? I'm How flying. cool is this? <laughs> Very cool. There's where we just took off. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I was looking at. That's not that big. It looks much bigger on the ground. Oh, yeah. 2,000 <laughs> feet. North of the airport. Yeah, when Dale and I flew, it was just dead. Somerville traffic, RV-174, Whiskey Mike, 8 miles to the east, inbound for uh, 45 or 24, Somerville. About there, 8 miles away. Is that close in the air? No, he's, we're fine. He's at our altitude, though, so that is, got to keep an eye on him. And he, also keep in mind that he probably wasn't on the frequency when I made my call. He, unless he has traffic information like I do, see, that's him right there. A little yeah. arrow zero yeah. he's at my altitude. So. so does someone switch altitudes or just get the heck out the well, way? Well, if he's he's descending to the airport, first of all. So yeah. not really worried about that. Um, and not really close to us. It, if you have to avoid traffic for some reason, the guy on the right has the right of way. So he'd have the right of way and I'd have to divert. Um, but also I know he's on one, two, three, nothing. So I would just call him. Like, yo, 
here's where I'm at. So, you know, but he's not concerned. Oh shoot, I opened up the heat instead of the freaking air. I was wondering I was why I was I so hot. I was like, why am I, and why am I spelling heat? <laughs> yeah, okay, so now what we do, we're at the altitude I want to be at. I'm going to trim the airplane, trim wheel down here, the tab on the back. You can't see it, it's on the elevator, but basically it'll make it so the plane will fly. Great, that's what I'm aiming for. I'm relieving all the pressure on the stick side, or the yoke, so I don't have to do anything uh, to hold it there. Oh. Okay, then I'm going to bring my throttle back to where I want it, lock it in, check my instruments, everything's looking good. And then I lean the engine out until it starts to run rough. You'll hear it there. Bring it back in a little bit. And that's the cruise procedure for this aircraft. Now I'm in cruise. Like cruise control in a car? No, cruise, cruise just means that's when you're flying. Like we're not climbing, we're not descending. Oh, okay. We're, just... we're not lining up for landing, we're just going where we want to go right now. St. George Airport's going to be out here. I'm going to fly toward that water tower out there. There's also smoke way out in the distance that I'm aiming for. And that's how I, it's a really easy way to keep your bearings. Other than staring at your compass and something inside the plane, find something outside the, outside the aircraft that you can focus on. It keeps your eyes outside the plane. Which, I'm a VFR pilot, so that's what I should be doing. I should be looking outside. You're a what? Air, uh, what? V, remember I always talk about VFR and IFR? Visual flight rules, instrument flight rules. So, I'm only allowed to fly when I can see. Oh, okay. I can't fly in clouds, I can't fly when um, it's too foggy, Okay. things like that. It does it not now typically get the air gets smoother? Uh, it depends on what the air is doing. See, you can see the bottom of the clouds is flat, so there's like, there's two masses of air. We're in one of them, the other mass will be above the clouds, and you can see the tops of the clouds are going that way. Yeah. So, I don't know what the wind's doing right here, let's see. You get a good idea. So our airspeed's 95 miles an hour, and our ground speed's 93. So we basically have no headwind. We have a two mile an hour headwind, maybe. Um, or a couple mile an hour headwind, which is so the wind's kind of going that way. Or well, the headwind component, all we know is is two miles per hour, three miles per hour. If you go up there, I bet it's a little more. It's bending the clouds over, so it will be fun to go up there though, mess around with the clouds. But we're also not that far from St. George, so. Um, see the bird up right here too? Yeah, I sure do. So I'm going to divert this way because birds, um, when they get spooked, they dive. So you don't want to fly under a bird. Oh, okay. That was close. Not close, but I mean like, he was pretty damn close. We would have went right underneath him. That's why you eyes outside the cockpit. Okay. Not just for traffic, Got but it. for birds, anything. That's so funny that you have to watch for traffic in the air, I, you know. So, you you do. I mean, it's it's very rare, right? There's a thing called big sky theory. And yeah. that is that the sky is really big. It's really hard to run into somebody. But it happens. I was going to say, yeah, it happens. Um, then you also don't want to get too close to somebody because it makes people uncomfortable. It's not safe. So. All right, so let's change over 122.8, which I know is your favorite number. That's the frequency over at St. George. So oh, okay. now we're almost there, 122.8. So we're going to start listening to St. George, which I don't hear anybody on. Also, it's Charleston Executive by the coast, so we'll hear a lot of people on there talking to them as well. Okay, that's neat. Yeah, Atlantic, uh, Charleston, Gamma Jet 862. Uh, we'll be on your ramp in about uh, 20 minutes. Uh, and be uh, dropping off uh, two folks. Uh, we'll give you a fuel order when we get on the ground. That's a private jet talking to the people on the ground at Charleston Executive Airport. So somebody He's, they're flying two people, and he says we're going to be on the ground soon, and they want service. They want ours ready, everything ready. <laughs> That's somebody with money. I don't know. I fly on a private jet. I don't have much money. 500 foot per minute descent to the airport. So that's what I like to do. That's when I still like to start descending. So all you do to descend, watch. Pull the power back. The airplane's going to start going down. See? The vertical speed, so... See the nose come down? Yeah. That's all you need to do to, to, do to descend. Okay, then there's a descent checklist, so I want my... Make sure to come in slowly. Um, make sure my throttle's where I want it. If I wanted car feed, I'd pull that out. I don't need it right now. Is that... That looks like a dam. Almost. Or... Oh no, it's a bridge! Oh boy. Oh yeah. Little bridge. Little uh, jetty or whatever it's called. St. George traffic, Cessna 17084, miles to the southeast, uh, inbound for landing. Uh, St. George traffic. I'm going to make a turn here because we're going to make left traffic into 2-3. 
Okie dokie. I like the way you're letting me know what's going on. Yep. That way people don't get scared. Exactly. So what we're doing is we're descending the airport is that, I don't know if you can see that like gray or brown strip. It's really hard to see because it's behind the trees. But you can see that line in the trees. That's the airport. I'll see if I'm looking at the right thing. It's like a road. That's our fire, top out to 410. Actually, let's overfly the field. I like that better. 5, 4, 2, 3, full stop. Potential airport. I'm going to go a little higher now because I have to change my mind about landing. Change your mind? Well, if he's not down there, I don't want to land yet. Well, yeah. If he's down there, I'll land though. So, lowest you want to overfly the field is 500 feet above the pattern altitude, so. That's 1,000 feet for pattern, so we want to be at 1,500. That's the wing. Yeah, that's that added, it's called an attitude indicator. So if I pitch down, you see it goes below the horizon. Pitch up, it goes above the horizon. <laughs> if I turn, it shows me I'm turning. So those are, that's what you, I'd be using if I couldn't see out the window. I, I use my instruments to tell me what the airplane's doing. Okay, but you, like you said, though, you can't see outside the plane. That's All no right, good. He's down there. How do you know? I can see him. St. George traffic, Cessna 170 for you, flying midfield, then maneuvering to the left downward for 2-3, full stop, St. George. Alright, so gas is on, undercarriage as well, the mixture is coming in. Top set, switches are on, seatbelts on. Alright, coming up to pattern altitude here. St. George traffic, Cessna 170 for you, turning left crosswind for 2-3, St. George. St. George traffic, Cessna 170 for you, turning left downwind, runway 2-3, full stop, St. George. Alright, so we're gonna get ready to land here, Bob. Okay. Okay. Alright, so beam the numbers, car peak comes out, mixture full ridge, pull this back, 10 degrees of flaps. <laughs> St. George traffic, Cessna 17048, left base for 23, full stop, St. George. Gosh, all those houses are just in a circle. Complete yeah. Complete circle. I don't know what that is. I've seen Look. it a bunch of though, it's not houses. Looks like mobile homes or sheds. Alright, this is our final. Okay. Oh, I see. Here we come. St. George traffic system 17048, turning final, runway 23, full stop, St. George. It's over water? No. There's water here. Yeah, Never knew there was water it's here. Fl it's flooded. All right, I got to concentrate here, so. Okay. Gas, undercarriage, mixture, prop, set, switches, seatbelts, we're landing. Open your window if you want to. Do you have to take off the opposite way? No. You always take off the land into the wind. So we'll taxi down and take back off that way. So, okay, so the same back way. Yeah. Usually that's all. That's going to be the case because you always want the wind in your face. But it lowers your ground speed. Your airspeed stays the same, but your speed you're moving over the ground slows down, and that's what you want. Oh, there's a green plane there. Yeah. I never saw that one there before. St. George traffic, system 1704, clear runway 23, St. George. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to end this one here. This was an amazing flight for me, an amazing time. Um, I had been waiting for so long to finally be able to fly with my mom. Like I said in the intro of another video, uh, my whole family's been hearing me talk about aviation forever, and this was, this was the goal, right? Be able to take my friends and family up show them why I'm so obsessed with it. Um, and I, I remember my first flight and I just remember how amazing it was. So um, it's just, it's awesome experience to be able to give that uh, to all my friends and family and especially to my mom. So this was a very special one to me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had an awesome time making the video. Um, if you guys do like it, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that jazz. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. There's a little hole in the front of it. Uh, on uh, miles, and the air rams into, there's a diaphragm in, in here, no, now, and then there's a static air so source on the, on the right over here, so it knows, it takes the difference in pressure from the ram air versus air that's not moving, and then it knows how fast you're going, because there's a relationship there. The pressure of moving air goes up linearly, or some known amount, um, with, with speed. So as you go faster, the pressure increases, right, you get more and more air pushing on it. So it just moves this needle, and that's how I know how fast I'm going. Crazy.